Hi, this is the third lecture on design of complex structures. In this lecture, what we will do is, we will talk about the three different design philosophies and how they are different from each other. I shall be using an animation video to do so. So watch this video to understand the difference between working stress method, limit state method and ultimate strength method. Reinforced concrete structures are generally designed by using working stress method, ultimate load method and limit state method. Let us learn each of these methods in detail. Let us begin with the working stress method. It is one of the traditional methods used for designing the structures. It is not only used in designing a reinforced concrete structure but also used in designing steel and timber structures. This method of design is based on the linear elastic theory. Working stress method ensures safety by restricting the stresses in materials which may be induced by the expected working loads on the structure. The assumption of linear elastic behavior is justifiable since the permissible stresses are kept below the ultimate strength of the material. The ratio of yield stress of the material to the corresponding working stress is termed as the factor of safety, where yield stress is the stress level at which the reinforced concrete ceases to behave elastically. In this method, factor of safety 3 is used for concrete and 1.8 is used for steel. This method assumes strain compatibility where the strain in reinforcing steel is assumed to be equal to the adjoining concrete. Consequently, the stresses in steel are linearly related to the stresses in concrete by a constant factor which is called as modular ratio. Working stress method is the only method used to investigate the reinforced concrete section for service stresses and serviceability states of deflection and cracking. Even though it has many advantages, there are few disadvantages too, which include the modular ratio design results in large percentage of compression steel, which is not economical. This method neither shows the real strength nor the true factor of safety of the structure under failure. Let us move on the next method that is the ultimate load method. This method was developed to overcome the discrepancies in working stress method. It is based on the ultimate strength of reinforced concrete at ultimate load which is obtained by enhancing the service load by a load factor so as to obtain the desired margin of safety. In this method, the stress condition of a structure is analyzed during the state of collapse using a non-linear stress strain curve of steel and concrete. The safety of the design is ensured by the proper use of load factors. It is to be noted that the satisfactory strength performance at ultimate loads does not guarantee satisfactory serviceability performance at normal service loads. As this method utilizes a large reserve of strength in plastic region and ultimate strength of the member, the resulting section becomes thin and slender. This gives rise to excessive deformation and cracking and also the effect of creep and shrinkage is not considered in this method. Now. Let us discuss the third method, the limit state method, which was developed to overcome the discrepancies in other two methods. As the working stress method gives satisfactory performance of the structure at working load, but it is unrealistic at ultimate state of collapse. Similarly, the ultimate load method ensures the realistic assessment of safety, but does not guarantee the serviceability requirements under service load. An ideal method of design should not only consider the ultimate strength of a structure but also concentrate on the serviceability 
and durability requirements. Limit state method considers the working and ultimate loads with a view to satisfy the requirements of safety and serviceability. As per IS 456-2000, all the limit state shall be considered in design to ensure adequate safety and serviceability. Two categories of limit state are considered for designing a structure. One is the limit state of collapse, which includes limit state of collapse in flexure, compression, shear, torsion and tension. The other is the limit state of serviceability, which includes limit state of deflection, cracking, vibration, fire resistance and durability.